Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Very good morning Today we are going to continue our next uh, topic under uh, Computer Architecture and Organization which is uh, Chapter Memory Part 4 uh, Part 3 actually So thank you for standing with me Okay so Let's start our class now So today we're going to introduce, uh, I'm going to introduce to you for uh, memory organization. So there are two topics under this memory organization. Okay, the first one is error checking and the first one is, uh, the second one is the byte ordering. So under error checking, okay, so in the memory, we need to perform the error checking due to possibility of the data being lost when they are stored inside your computer. So most memory available today is basically highly reliable. So most systems simply have the memory controller check for error detection. So memory chips with built-in error checking typically use a method known as parity to check for errors. And high-end servers often have a form of error checking known as error correction code, ECC. So how do you determine these two? So usually they are conducted in your main memory so when you want to purchase main memory, okay, in case you are building your own PC, so you need to be careful not to buy the, uh, the ECC version comparing to normal version because most normal version uh, for normal CPU, for normal motherboard, they don't have ECC uh, based function inside it so that ECC RAM will not work under normal uh, motherboard, but for server motherboard, they have this error correction code that they can conduct, that they can conduct on the RAM. So usually we, we have this in high-end servers, but these days they can find it both uh, depending on the type of the motherboard, uh, the make of the motherboard itself. So uh, basically, uh, this only occurred in RAM. So ROM they differ from RAM with no write control. So parity checking, okay, so Parity chips usually they have an extra bit for every eight bits of data. Okay, so usually they have uh, for any data stored they have one uh, one extra bit for every eight bits. So parity can be divided into even parity and odd parity. So even parity is basically if the total number of the binary ones is odd, the parity bit is set to one. If the total is even, the parity bit set to zero. Okay, when the data is read back and the parity bit is different than the total number of bit, okay, so this means that there are something wrong with the data. So this is where you have to conduct the error checking. Okay, parity error, you need to conduct the error checking uh, when uh, you read again the data using the parity. So odd parity works the same way instead so when the number of uh, one uh, the total number of one inside uh, the the data is even okay they will set it as one instead of zero uh, but when the, the data is uh, odd they will set this as zero okay parity error can be caused by ram chips that are unable to hold data reliably this happens when the chips are overheat or power falters so the problem with parity is that it discovers errors but does nothing to correct them. So we have the error correction code. So computer in critical position needs a higher level of fault tolerance. So high-end servers, they have a form of error checking known as error correction code. Like parity, ECC use additional bits to monitor the data. Different is that ECC use several bits for error checking. How many depends on the width of the bus instead of one? ECC memory use a special algorithm not only to detect single bit error but actually correct them as well. So how does they correct, the detect and they correct? So memory's error usually caused by voltage spikes. Okay, you know that the data inside the main memory, inside the memory they hold as voltage. Okay, so any voltage spike can damage the data. So the solution is that error detecting or error correcting and extra bits are added to find out which one is good or bad. The Hamming distance between two strings of bit, 
okay, is the number of corresponding bit position that differ. This can be found using S or or corresponding bits of equivalent by adding corresponding bits without a carry. For example, two bits, okay, like for example, A and B here with X or you will get uh, this data down here. The Hamming distance H between these 10 bit string is 6. Okay, why do you see 6? Because the total of the data here is 6. The number of ones in the XOR string. So when you look at Hamming code, okay, imagine that we have an actual data and the code is determined in big endian. Okay, so what is big endian? Okay, I'll mention it to you afterwards. So let's take a look. Easier said, big endian. Okay, we do the correction, we do the code, uh, the, the, the parity code and the correction from the left. Okay, big endian. And little endian is from the right. So that, let's uh, hold that in your mind first. Okay, so in order to determine the parity bit, okay, usually parity bit we have in position 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So this is the power of two position. Okay, so here is the position 1, position 2, position 4, position 8, position 16, 32, 64, and up until how many bits, yeah. So, all other bits position are for data to be encoded. Okay, like for example, 3, 5, 6, 7, uh, 10, 11. So, these are all for the data. The remaining one is for data. So, basically, the parity bits is added among the data to become a coded word. Okay, so... For first step, okay, to get the first code word, of the first coded data here, A, first parity bit A, so you need to check it, check every uh, skip one from A, okay, skip one after A. So here, A, so you have skip one, you have one, okay, and then zero, one, zero, one, uh, continuously, okay, so every skip one, when you total them, Okay, 10101 zero, one, zero, one, according to this data is 3, which is, is an odd. So when odd, parity bit A is equal to 1. So here is 1. And then for the parity bit B, you need to check 2 and skip 2. So B usually they start with the next uh, after B. Okay, so here we count B as well 2 and then skip 2 check 2, skip 2, check 2. If you do it correctly, you will not check the C, D, E, F, G, okay, afterwards. So you will find out that B, okay, they will check it properly, 2, 2, 2, 2. So you will get the total of uh, bits from this data is 4, which is an even. So B is a 0. And then we have few remaining one left. So here next for C, is because it's in position 4 okay check 4 bits and skip 4 bits <coughs> so check 4 bits skip 4 bits so here the total bits in this case is 0, 0, 1, 0 is 1 is equal odd so odd for C is 1 and then for D so you need to check 8 bits and skip 8 bits so since the data already finished at uh, the first five, so we stop at where it finish, and here D check eight bits, but because we don't have eight, we had check only five. So the total here is zero one one zero, which is too even. So the data here at D is zero, and finally the coded word. This word where the data with the parity bit, which become the coded word, is this one where you have A here, B here. C here and D here. Okay. So we next we're going to the byte ordering. Okay. So byte ordering is how do you put in you how do you arrange those data according to address location? Okay. So you have two types of byte ordering. First one is big endian and little endian. So little endian means the lowest order byte of the number is stored in memory at the lowest address and the high order byte at the highest address so for example a 4 bit long integer so here the byte is start from the right side 0 1 2 3 
So here, 0 stored in base address plus 0, base address plus 1, base address plus 2, base address plus 3. Okay, so in term processor, use little addend by order. So this is little addend. And then you have big addend. So big addend, the okay, they will count on the left side. Okay, if you look at your bit from the right side, is bit by 0, by 1, by 2, by 3. However, from the left side is the one that being stored first. Okay, so here is base address plus 0 by 3, base address plus 1 by 2, base address plus 3 by, uh, by base address plus 2 by 1, and base address plus 3 by 0. So this one, Motorola processor, okay, those who use in Max, use big Indian by order. So common file format, okay, according to this uh, ordering, okay, like for example, Photoshop use big Indian, Bitmap use Indian, okay, GIF, okay, they use written Indian. So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of different kind of data types here. So this is where the data types are important. You cannot just simply use, uh, like for example, JPEG uh, and turn it directly into bitmap so without any proper rearrangement of the data. Okay, so this is where you have the, the functions that we need under the byte ordering. So example, okay, so here you have a number six. Okay, so this is 32 bit form 6. Um, sorry, uh, yes, it is 32 bit form 6. Okay, the 110 would be in big Indian scheme. Okay, the 110 would be in byte 3. Byte 3. Why byte 3? Okay, here is byte 3. Okay, or 7 or 11 etc. And in little Indian scheme, the 110 is in byte 0. Here. Okay, you look at the arrangement here. So for address 0 is from the left for big Indian. 0, 1, 2, 3. And from for little Indian, the address is from the right. 0 is on the right side, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So when you put all this data into this uh, memory location, okay, if big Indian, it will arrange prettily like it is uh, from left to right here. Okay, when they split into 8, 8, 8. And for little Indian, they will also arrange properly from left to right here. But however, the destination address is opposite of the big Indian. So example here, you have this data 3A to B for A. Okay, so when you arrange in big Indian, address 0, 0 refer to 3A. Okay, however, if you read address uh, 0, 0, in little Indian is CA. Okay, so this is a different kind of arrangement. Okay, when you read and write it, you have to properly, when you write and read, again, you have to properly uh, have the proper byte ordering or else the data read will be in a different organization later on. So why? Okay, so here is an example. If you sending, when sending big Indian into little Indian computer, okay, you're sending this data from big Indian and into little Indian. So little Indian will rearrange those data according to little Indian organization. So in this case, okay, 0, 3 will be in the first location, 0, 3. So it will be a little bit different than, uh, they will be a lot different than the original data. So here in this case, CA for A to B, 3, A. And the same thing from little Indian to big Indian computer. So it will be rearranged wrongly, okay? So there are no simple solution for this. One way is to include a header in front of each data item telling what kind of data and how long it is. So usually that is why we have the data type so that we can confirm what kind of data we are reading when we want to open it again. Okay, so that's all for uh, memory organization. Thank you very much for listening to me again for another chapter for computer architecture organization. Thank you for the like and subscribe. Please do continue supporting me uh, in this channel. So this is Dr. Shari Fauzi Kamaru Zaman from UMP. So just a message for you guys to stay safe, stay healthy and take care. Bye-bye.